In the Zone, presented by TD. In the Zone, presented by TD, the farewell edition. This is it, game 162. Last time we're going to be at Rogers Center this season. Mike, it's, it's a sad day. It is a sad day. You know, it, it's, it's bittersweet, but more bitter than sweet because... Well, how is it sweet again? Well, you know, it, it's finally, this season has come to its merciful conclusion. And I, I'll get to see my family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be nice. But, but yeah, but, but I mean, you know, I, this is, for me anyways, my office. And this is where I've been every other day, basically, for the last six months. Um, I've seen a baseball game happen pretty much every day since the end of February. Uh, and I can, will continue in the postseason coverage uh, on Sportsnet 590 of the fan. Make sure you tune in. Um, and yeah. Sportsnet. Well, I'm not going to be involved with that. No, but... They don't, they don't want me on the television. That's not true. I don't, I don't believe that they want me on the television. We barely want you on this video podcast. It would ruin things for Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn and... Pat Tabler and Alan Ashby, they're all going to be doing the television coverage in the playoff. They have yet to invent the filter to allow you to be on television. Wow, that's true. They'll give me the internets, but that's the extent of it. But I will be on the radio every day, unlike those slackers on television who won't be working every game. And uh, so that we will still have baseball, but, you know, I won't be going to the ballpark and won't be interacting with the people. And it's it's... It's always sad when a season comes to an end, even a season that might wind up being a 90-loss season. Yeah, it's been a, a brutal season all around for the Toronto Blue Jays, and we talked in, in a number of interviews we've done with Blue Jays this season about the big reason why, and that was the injuries. And uh, you're going to get to hear from Alex Anthopoulos, not you on the video podcast, but you can watch it. I'm sure the video is going to be up on sportsnet.ca as well, but he's going to do his media availability. And lots of question marks going into the offseason for this team. It's going to be an offseason where pitching is going to be the number one priority, it seems. It, it, that's what everybody said. It's what John Farrell says he wants. It's what Alex Anthopoulos says this team needs. Pretty clear that uh, pitching depth is going to be the priority. Interesting, too, especially because Alex has historically kept things so close to the vest that he's kind of setting himself up a little bit, that if he doesn't come through with some serious starting pitching, people are going to be very, very upset. And, and uh, he's, he may also be setting himself up a little bit on the market. For, and I don't believe that. I believe that if the Blue Jays make the best offer in a trade for a player, a team's not going to say, you know what, none of the other offers are as good as yours, but because you need pitching so badly, you still have to give us more stuff or we're not going to give you the pitcher. I don't think that will happen. But it is curious that they're so out about it. And, and I believe they do feel like they need two legit 200-plus inning starting pitchers and they don't have to be all-stars. They don't have to be top of the rotation guys. One of those would be nice. But just having those reliable guys, that's what they're looking for this offseason. And we'll have to see if they can go out and get them. Are the excuses gone? Is it over? I mean, second wild card, everybody in the division has made the playoffs since the Blue Jays last made the playoffs. Oakland A's for 90-win season. How can you blame it on payroll? How can you blame it on division uh, circumstances, unbalanced schedule anymore. I, I just don't, I don't think there are any of those excuses existing uh, going forward for this club. Well, I don't like the word excuse too much. I mean, those were legitimate reasons as to why the Blue Jays had a hard time for a long time. For that period between like 2003 and 2007, no one was beating the Red Sox and Yankees, no matter what. And that's a, a huge swath of time, right? And then the Tampa Bay came up and did it. It's been five years since then. Yeah. But there's also been two general managers since then. And, and, you know, one of the things about the Blue Jays right now, well, not right now, but at least going into this season, is nobody should have had any reason to expect them to be contenders this year because of the stage they were in their development. That doesn't change. The, the American League East, you cannot say anymore, there are, this is an unwinnable division. There are titans that we can't do anything about. You can't really talk about payroll because well, Tampa Bay has done it on a crappy payroll. But remember, too, Tampa Bay had to suck for 10 years to collect draft picks. They had to change their management, too. And then they wound up being what they are. And they probably started their run a year early. And the Blue Jays may start their run a year late. And that's just unfortunate circumstance. What you can do is look at Baltimore and say, 
holy crap. <laughs> over the course of the last 19 years. I've said that a couple of times this yeah. season. The Blue Jays have had several teams over the course of the last 19 years who were better than this year's Baltimore Orioles who never got a sniff of anything. That sucks. But that doesn't mean 2013 is do or die for this team. And if the Blue Jays don't make the playoffs in 2013, you got to fire everybody and blow this place up. But what does it mean, though? I mean, for, uh, fans obviously want to, I mean, everybody wants to see this team in the playoffs, or at least playing mean, meaningful games around this time. And, I mean, I tweeted out the picture of uh, the Jumbotron showing the game 162 between the A's and Rangers, which obviously is well in the past for you now in cyberspace. But uh, Greg Brady, one of the, the hosts of the morning show on Sportsnet 590, the fan retweeted and said, yeah, finally, some meaningful baseball at Rogers Center <laughs> late in the, in the season, which I kind of found funny. But, yeah, obviously, everybody starved for a little meaningful baseball. Baseball. I mean, it, there's so much to be decided in the offseason. How much pressure is there on Alex or on this club to at least be playing meaningful baseball next year? They thought they were going to be playing meaningful baseball this year in September. They really did, and there's nothing you can do about the things that happened this season. There just simply isn't. And I know people don't want to hear that, and I know it sounds like making excuses for them. There is no team that can lose three starting pitchers in the space of four days for at least two and a half months. Two for the year, one for two and a half months, and still be competitive. It's just not possible, never mind all the other stuff that happened. They plan to be competitive again next year, and they're gonna try their best to do it. But you can't rush experience, you can't rush development, you can't try to move the timetable, you can't move the clock forward more faster than it's gonna move. It's going to move, and that's going to be it. And if guys aren't ready, then you look. Maybe you look for different guys, or you look at what they did uh, to show how close they are to being ready. This is a team that wants to be in a race next year. This is a team that's going to try its best, the front office, to get into a position to be in a race next year. But once it starts, it starts. Jason Fraser has been a loyal soldier of the Toronto Blue Jays for a long time. He's seen a lot of incarnations of this team here at Rogers Centre. We got a chance to catch up with him. Here's that conversation. Here with Jason Fraser. And Jason, you've seen so many teams over your tenure here as a Blue Jays relief pitcher. I mean, there was so much talent and things looked so great at the start of the season. It was a pretty good start. And then just to see all the injuries and how things played out this season, where does it, it rank on, on the disappointment level of seasons that you've seen here in Toronto? Uh, maybe number one. Maybe number one. Uh, we're still very talented. Uh, a lot of young guys. And, um, man, it's hard to overcome those injuries. It, it, it seemed like to me once Brandon Morrow got hurt, we just couldn't replace him. And, uh, and then the dominoes fell with Hutchinson and, and Drabeck, and we just couldn't keep up. We were just overmatched going into New York, Boston, Tampa, Baltimore. Um, Bautista goes down. That's the way it goes. We're here watching the Oakland A's uh, make a run at a you know division title. I can't name five guys on the team. <laughs> yeah, I, we, we have a hard time, too. You mentioned Morrow. I want to take you a little farther back. Sergio Santos threw five innings this year for this team, and part of that bullpen, that, that kind of sets that bullpen. We thought there were a lot of guys who could close and who could throw late innings, and you and Casey and Oliver did a heck of a job while you were healthy before you went down too. But without that guy at the back, at least through April and May, that was a really hard time too, even before Brandon goes down. If Sergio Sergio, like he was with the White Sox, we line up pretty well. Um, Coco, for whatever reason, wasn't a good fit for us. Um, and he's had a great career. Just didn't work out. That happens. Oliver's unbelievable. Casey's been great. Uh, you find a guy like Aaron Loop. You know, he's your, your new Mark Zepchinski, you know. Um, bullpen lines up okay. And you got Del Bar and Lincoln. Those guys have power arms. I love power arms coming out of the bullpen. And... Uh, um, you know, the, the bullpen actually looks all right with or without me and Oliver and, and uh, you know, Sergio going to come back on time and it, it lines up okay for next year. The without you part is that you're a free agent at the end of your season. Uh, this may be your last game as a Blue Jay as opposed to your last, last game as a Blue Jay where you didn't know it was until you got traded back this year. But did those two months in Chicago kind of change the way you might think about heading into the open market this season? Without a doubt. 
um, I tell people those two months to Chicago were maybe the two most enjoyable months of baseball I played. It was just a great clubhouse. It was a, a baseball city. Um, um, just a lot of veteran guys, and it was, I was after you know a couple of days, I was very comfortable. It was just really enjoyable. And uh, would I come back? Of course. And but would I have any problem going somewhere else? You know, um, there's there's not going to be any issues there. I'll, I'll play for anybody. They're all big league cities. Yeah, I, I kind of want to follow up on that because you mentioned Chicago is a baseball city, and I mean Toronto is never going to be confused with a baseball city. Obviously, it's a, a hockey city first, but we've seen. You bring them a winner here in the early 90s, and they can pack the joint. It's been a while since we've seen mm -hmm. that, though. But, uh, I mean, do you, do you take that into consideration, the kind of fan support that they get in Chicago no matter what? I mean, the, the Cubs have been a loser for 100 years, and they still pack uh, Wrigley Field every day. Do you take that into account when you're, you're thinking about where you want to go? Take a lot of things into account. Um, uh, you know, the city, the team, uh, my wife, my family, the contract. Um, you know, there's there's just, there's there's so many there's so many of me out there. There's so many middle relievers. There's just you know it's flood. There's not there's not enough spots on these teams. So uh, you know you you really got to jump on an opportunity. Maybe you can't be too picky. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know maybe I'm invited back. I don't know. They don't they don't tell me anything. I don't know what you guys know. Uh, we don't know much. At least I don't. I can't speak for Mike. Mike knows everything. But uh, uh, just going back to, to the teams that you've seen here in Toronto and looking at what the Baltimore Orioles have done this year. You mentioned the Oakland A's and how we, you can't mention, I mean, how many uh, uh, rookies are in that starting rotation now? I think three. It's ridiculous. But I'm sure you've been on teams here in Toronto that you have felt maybe better than the teams that are going to make the playoffs this year in Baltimore and Oakland, but just couldn't get over that hump for whatever reason here in Toronto. Can you think back to some teams? that were good enough to make the playoffs but just circumstances didn't didn't allow that to happen I don't think we've ever been better than uh, New York and Boston both those teams at the same time 2006 we finished second um, and we were in second I don't know 15 games back that was our best shot um, but I don't think at any time we were the best team in a division we were good we've had some really good teams just not not enough firepower to to you know, overcome Boston and New York. You talked about the White Sox and the veteran leadership that was there last year, and leadership has been a hot button topic here the last couple of weeks. Two years ago, three years ago, you were here when there was pretty much an open revolt in the clubhouse that nobody really wanted to talk about, but a few people talked about anyway. That was some players who were upset with the manager. This year it feels like it's different. This doesn't seem to have as much to do with John Farrell as it has to do with maybe too much of a youthful culture on this team. Do you, what's, what's your read on it that you're willing to share with us? Um, you know, that revolt you speak of, you know what, I was, I wasn't privy to, you know, that, those guys, you know, doing what they did, whatever they did. They went upstairs and talked to the president or general manager or something. You didn't get any notes passed to you in the classroom? No, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't tenured enough or I wasn't good enough. There was, I just wasn't, you know, among that group. Um, <laughs> this year, um, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's a pretty weak answer. It, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to explain, it's hard to describe, and, uh, you know, we're just, I think guys are just trying to play out the season, and we're going to, you know, we're going to try, we're going to try again next year. It was just, so, it was such a, so disappointing, and it's, um, there's like 55 guys that come through the clubhouse. It's been a mess. I don't think we come back from a road trip with the, with the same team, and that's, you know, I don't know if you can win that way. I remember the one road trip you went out, when you went out west, at the end of July, a 10 game trip, came back, I didn't go on that trip, and there were seven people I had to introduce myself to when you got back. I believe it. I believe it. Just guys coming in and out and just so many injuries. Not just injuries, injuries to, you know, at that time our best pitcher and, and you know, the, the home run leader. And, and then uh, people forget Lowry was out for a while and the, the energy, the spark he gives us, as nutty as he is. You know, he's, I, I love him. I want him up. We need nine of Brett Lowry out there. We're going to win games. Um, 
you know, how do you find those guys? I don't know. Yeah, it's going to probably be a different looking uh, Blue Jays team in the offseason. Hopefully uh, you're a part of it going forward. Good luck in the offseason. Thanks a lot for this, Jason. Thank you. Anytime. Jason Fraser's a good dude. And it, I went to high school with his wife as well. I mean, just a little inside baseball there. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Probably nothing. Well, what it does have to do with, he mentioned his wife's going to have a say in the decision. She's from here. Uh, he met her here when she was um, she was working in the stadium. and, and so that's Part of that dance crew, I think. I think so. The early incarnation, though not what they have now. Um, so that, that may have an impact on his decision. Yeah, uh, certainly uh, has his place as a middle reliever, and he, he's very honest about it. There's a million guys like him, and certainly uh, very self-aware. And uh, the comments about the, the clubhouse atmosphere, very interesting as well. I uh, want to get to the Tom Cheek voting stuff. Um, still going on till the end of this week, so not a lot of time, but people still have some time to get the, their votes out there. Yeah, as we speak now, there's less than 48 hours left in the voting, so it ends on Friday, October 5th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time www.facebook.com slash baseball hall we've been pounding on you since the middle of August and I appreciate it so much that everyone's doing it and voting and remembering to go we will find out very soon if it all worked and I hope it will you'll have as, as I speak right now two more opportunities to vote so please take advantage of them facebook.com slash baseball hall do it before 5 Eastern on Thursday so that you get another chance to do it on Friday because you can only vote once every 24 hours it is imperative again Tom Cheek 4306 right uh, right looking right at us as we do this podcast every other week here from the ballpark uh, and we we do have a little flag on the moon with the 4306 on it when we do it from there too so please go out and do it go out and vote just two more times I promise and I won't ask you again until next August which uh, hopefully we'll be doing this video podcast again because it was a ton of fun. Uh, we want to thank everybody who took the time to. We want to thank everybody who took the time to watch it, uh, whether you watch it on Sportsnet.ca uh, or uh, iTunes or YouTube or wherever other places. I think that's it. But uh, want to thank the guys behind the scene, Mike. Uh, who's Mike? You're Mike. Uh, Jeff Mike McCormack, Mike. Uh, Eric Evans. I want to thank you as well, Mike Wilner. You did a great uh. job. Thanks everybody uh, that watched, and uh, hopefully next year we can we can do some some from Buffalo, maybe do some Loganberry, and uh, and fried bologna sandwiches. That'd be as good. Long as, uh, as long as we can get some onion petals going as well, for sure. Thank you, Bennis. I know this whole thing was your idea, and and uh, the the audio podcast as well, which you've completely forgotten about in the month of September. But without you know without that initiative, we wouldn't have done this. And given these, I think. It's fair to say hundreds of millions of people who watch every week. Uh, just a tremendous 15 to 20 minutes of entertainment. It really is. Uh, fans across the globe watching this. But yes, thank you. Thank you for watching it. He's Mike Wilner. Follow him on Twitter at Wilnerness590. Also check him out on Sportsnet 590. The fan got you covered throughout the month of October. All your playoff baseball coverage uh, on the fan. And you can follow me on Twitter as well at Bennis Great season. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next year.